Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. This is going to be the first episode where we just take a nap. In the middle of the episode. Yeah. There Let's start now. Alright, now we're recording. Now we're recording. Now we're recording. Am I in focus? <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> yeah. Not enough time right. for this. This isn't going to be the most action-packed episode. Yeah. We, uh... Coming off of a three-day event, <laughs> we're very tired. Yeah, that's true. And whiskey typically doesn't help that, but we are team players. But it's Friday. <laughs> but it's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. Okay, so this was a gift from Gordon and Leah, who are at said event. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came from Colorado and brought us some Breckenridge whiskey. Lovely people. Now, uh, here's the cool thing is I've actually gotten the chance to talk with Jordan via the Master Distiller. Mm -hmm. I was uh, hoping to go hang out with them when they do the class... Um, with the American Distilling Institute, where they teach people how to distill whiskey. A blend of straight bourbon whiskey. Yeah. Now, uh, they're sourcing their whiskey from Kentucky and Indiana, which means MGP and maybe some other Kentucky distillers. They're also making their own whiskeys. They're blending straight whiskeys together uh, with a mash bill of 38% um, green rye. It's really high rye. Uh, what? 56% yellow corn. What is green rye? Um, it's rye that's green. No question you don't know. <laughs> yeah! yeah. Came up with something. <laughs> oh, you did the research today, oh, too. So you did, did the you research didn't today. look into that. <laughs> uh, the one thing I haven't really spent a lot of time doing in my life is actually distilling things. You should play a game called Stump the Wee Man. Yeah. <laughs> Ask your whiskey questions. 6% uh, <laughs> unmalted barley. All right. All right, so let's drink this stuff. And green stuff. Oh, look, it looks green. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, it, Is it we, a bit cloudy? We both thought it looked a bit cloudy in the But that's just a tint bottle, a but it may be like a, yeah, like a texture. No, there's a little bit of a cloudiness. I like that because that means that they haven't overly filtered it. Yeah. When you get a whiskey that's a little bit cloudy, just so you know, that means that they haven't gone aggressive on filtration. It means they've left some of the things in the whiskey that contribute to flavor profiles. This whiskey's dirty. Dirty whiskey. From Colorado. Sure, or it could mean, I figured out what green rye means in Colorado. Because they just legalized marijuana. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah, it's totally not true. Yeah. Although I'm sure there's an infusion in there somewhere. Not in this, but oh. in Colorado. Now this has won some really serious awards. And I can see why. Yeah. That is a good whiskey. Really smooth. I will say I'm a big fan of Jordan V. I'm a big fan of Breckenridge Distillery because of how much they've invested <coughs> in the education of the community mm -hmm. in giving back and teaching others how to do the things they know. Yeah. Right? They are the definition of the anti-snob distillery who cares most about whiskey and the whiskey industry and the whiskey people. So they're class. They are legit. Um, and you can put the link to, the, to their website in the description yeah. of this video. Um, in their class, they teach people how what, like what's involved in the distillation process. Yeah, they actually run them through the entire process of making whiskey from start to finish. Okay. Yeah. And that's the one thing that I have um, may or may not have distilled whiskey before. Because that would be illegal. Because that would be illegal. Uh, so, in theory, if Don't I Don't go to his house. Yeah, in theory, if I had done that, uh, I would have done it on a really small scale. And I would have done it only with certain kinds of things, but I've ne I would never have tried bourbon. They just put you in the little prison. It's still prison. It's a little prison? It's the little one. Is it like a dog kennel? <laughs> <laughs> I do like this, though. Um, mm. it's it's uh, <laughs> it's a little high. It's high alcohol bourbon. -y. Uh, no, it's only forty three. It just kind of smells. It, no, it, it tastes more dramatic than that. Yeah, forty three percent would lead you to believe. And uh, for me, the flavor it's not like a spike in any given place. There's some really nice caramel sweet flavors up front, and then I think it unfolds into vanilla that still re that still uh, remains pretty dramatic on the end. Yeah, I agree with all that. And it doesn't go away. This one lingers in your throat. Yeah, I'm trying real hard not to cough, not because of the whiskey, but I have a cough, uh, and I don't want people to think. Well, that's awkward. The whiskey is making me cough. Yeah. Let's see what a little water does to this. Actually, I need a straw for that. You know what? I'm just so tired. I don't even feel like stealing from you. 
You know, it's that level. You guys have no idea. It's that level of lethargy. Oh, wait, that was the wrong one. What did you do? <laughs> did you just dump a whole bunch? <laughs> you, <d> <laughs> you ruined your bourbon. I'm so tired. <laughs> we just need a nap. <laughs> I just. Why are we I just today? I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was pouring into the water glass. I was pouring into what remained of the whiskey. Look at the color. That's, that's like, just a really it's like this. <laughs> oh. I bet you that's delicious water. Yeah, let's find it's out. It's no longer whiskey. Yeah, that's nasty. Well, this is mine. You can't have it. Oh, look, pure water. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the question. That's, I, I mean, I don't even want to. That's a lost cause. It really is. Yeah. How <sighs> embarrassing for you. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I'm so, I'm so tired. Okay. Now okay. what? You're just gonna add a little bit of water then? Yeah. Okay. Give me a couple. No, I don't have enough. I'll pour it. No, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you might fall asleep while we're actually shooting if I pour you any more whiskey. <laughs> okay. I don't know what this will do to it because I wasn't getting a lot of oily content in the whiskey originally. So in theory, it'll kind of mellow out and take an edge off. There, there wasn't a tremendous amount of hotness. Yeah, it mellowed it out. There wasn't a tremendous amount of um, edge to begin with. Uh, there were some big flavors, but it was only 44%, so it's not you know yeah. alcohol sharpness. Right. But it did, it did round out those flavors. Yeah, before. a little too much. I thought it was more interesting before. I think they chose the exact right proof on this whiskey mm -hmm. to get the most out of the flavors. And that's a really cool kind of science-y thing, which is as you're uh, what's called proofing a whiskey, which means uh, you have a barrel of whiskey, yeah. and you're going to combine three or four. Well, depending on how long it's been sitting in the barrel, the proof could be really high. It could be 50 to 60% alcohol, mm -hmm. right? So there are two ways to get it down to the 40, 45 range that most whiskeys are. You can either add the water to it before you put it in the barrel, or you can do all the blends and add the water right before you barrel bottle it is one way better than the other for they have different effects okay and people will swear by one or the other now they proof it's called proofing your whiskey which means you're taking it from what it was out of the barrel and bringing it down mm -hmm. to a 40 43 right and when you proof a whiskey you have to be really careful about well how much water are we going to add to this yeah and think of how panicky I mean that is risky, right? You've got a barrel that's been sitting there you for five not years be doing that based on and you're just gonna yeah you're just gonna pour some water into it and hope it turns out for the best right no, 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 no. You could you could ruin a six-year experiment that way, right? So you take small amounts and you add small amounts of water until you achieve a flavor profile like, bam, that's it. Then you do the math and the measurements and add exactly that amount of water. I want that job. I know. So let me try this one. No, nope, no, nope. nope. need another one. A little one. <laughs> no, it's coming out there. In theory, they're spitting out whiskey while they're doing those. Not all of them, but I found that no, a lot of tasters will do that when, especially if you're doing um, judging. Like whiskey yeah. competitions, because yeah. you know you got like a hundred whiskeys to try. And the last in one, day. one is the best. That's right. <laughs> uh, and so they're spitting, which I always think is like I, I completely get it. I totally understand why. Mm -hmm. But I, um, I have a hard time currently with my level of experience. I have a hard time really getting into a whiskey and understanding it without swallowing the whiskey. Um, I think it changes the evaporation. I think it changes the flavor notes. Hmm. It helps me find other things. I've tried the taste and spit, and I don't get the same kind of experience. But there are world famous tasters that do that all the time and they swear by it. So. It's actually against the, uh, the mooching bylaws. It, yes. It's. I'm not legally allowed to do that. All right. So, uh, Thomas Graves did say one thing, um, which was when we did the Lock Loman video, yeah, why, do, you, why how, do we think it's so cheap? It's surprised how affordable it was. Yeah. Now, uh, price with whiskey has nothing to do with quality. Price as, and whiskey is the same as price in diamonds, okay. which means it has to do with rarity only. Okay. Rarity and ease of access. I don't mean rare as in truly rare. Like, for example, there's a whiskey I love that in America is rare, but in Scotland, very common. Right. Which is long more than 16. You can get it a lot of places, mm -hmm. right? But in the U.S., it's sometimes hard to get your hands on one. Mm -hmm. That makes it rare and more expensive in so the U.S. So supply and demand. Supply and demand, right? Okay. So um, when you have a whiskey that's uh, kind of prevalent and easier to get your hands on, it'll be cheaper. If there's less of it, it'll be more expensive. It has nothing to do with whether it's a good whiskey or not. Okay. Nothing to do with it. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm looking, looking for the exceptions, but it's not going to disprove the rule. But I'm saying if there is something in a plastic bottle with a twisty cap, 
<laughs> probably going to be safe to say. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's rare, there's not the demand for that probably. Is well, be remember that if it's that budget, yeah. then it's not going to be hard to make more of it. Mm -hmm. So technically, it's not rare. Yeah. All right. Right. All right. I think I think that'll do it. Too us. much learning, man. I just. <sighs> All right. Well, till tomorrow, I'm here crazy. Stay this side illegal. I need to take a damn nap. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.